Hello, hello, hello. Sorry for missing stream yesterday. I do have family in town. Uh, but you might have missed that if uh, you didn't see my Twitter. Also, starting a bit late, uh, kind of related things. Also, want to get it out of the way, I got some follows uh, since the last stream. Thank you, Princess Skirts, The Masked Ferret, Flash Gen 76, and that traffic cone. I bid you welcome. Now then, welcome to Sin Day, the new stream series I'm starting where I pick every evil or jerk option that I can. And uh, I got the suggestion, I believe it was from Zedward, my friend over at uh, Play Together, Stay Together, that I should do a dating sim. So I set out to find the a dating sim that one, I knew would make me, would allow me to pick jerk options, and two, was new, two was new to me, and three was as weird as fucking possible. So welcome to Dial Town, phone dating simulator. I have played only five minutes of this game, but after five minutes, I was like, okay, the rest of this, I have to keep blind for myself. Uh, I have played previous games by this dev, and they all have very good writing that lets you be very evil if you want to be. Uh, direct Dog Man. Um, this is kind of one of those bits of cursed internet lore. Don't ask me where I heard about this guy. It could be considered cringe to some people, but trust me, I trust this dev. I think this is going to be great. So, yeah. Probably going to be a lot of voice acting for me. Let's just get into it. Select a god-awful chapter to experience. Uh, well, obviously I have to do the start. Oh, <laughs> don't mind the repeat playthroughs. It's just because I tested to make sure I could, like, save and everything, because it did come up with a thing. It did come up with a little error where I wasn't sure my save files were going to gel. Hello. Welcome to Dial Town, phone dating sim. You must now answer this hound's questions three. Is there any particular reason that you're speaking in all caps? Even to the dev stand-in, we're going to be an asshole. Shot! Alright, now, if you'd shut up, I can ask you what your name is. The awkward silence stretches out. Oh, right. Anywho, what's your name? My name is Timber. Really? That's your name? Oh, hun, I'm so sorry. Hmm, nope, don't like that response. You'll live. Anywho, second question. Select a head. Note, head selection only affects compatibility with dateable characters and doesn't directly indicate gender. That's the next question. I can have a phone head or a typewriter. <laughs> oh my god, the space bar says I need some. Nectar, dog man. <laughs> Dodo, is there anything else that's spelled out in there? There's an Omega symbol. Uh, but, uh, no. I'm going to go with a phone head because this is the phone dating sim. Haha, <laughs> nice. Enjoy having telemarketers living in your head. Well, I'd rather be a phone than a fucking dog. My greatest burden is remembering where I've buried my old breadsticks at any given time. Please reevaluate your life choices thusly. Now, final question. What gender do you want to be? No, gender only affects how you're referred to in dialogue. It doesn't affect the NPCs you can date or restrict what endings you can get. So I can be a boy, a girl, a nuclear bitch, or other to enter my own custom pronouns, which I think is really cool. But uh, I tried the they them and it led to something hilarious, but I've seen that before, so it's not gonna catch me off guard. So I'm gonna just go with a boy. Gotcha, gotcha. Alright, enjoy having the innate ability to open pickle jars, I guess. Thanks, Daddy Doggo. What did I say about calling me? Alright then, get out of my sight. Gladly. Wait, was that... Something was on screen. What the hell was that? 
Is that like a secret? I'm not crazy, right? Like, that showed up on the capture, yeah? Hmm. You sinful creature. Seems I'm alive again. Darn. I hate it when I do that. Hmm. My testes are firm and ripe. Must be getting ready to hatch. The time for reproduction is now. I must find the dank, dark pit to lay my eggs in. Fairground. Fairground is dark, dank, and greasy. Plentiful supply of carnival food nearby. Yes. I must go to the carnival. Mission gained. Go to Funfair. That was terrifying. Well, there we have it. The carnival. So close yet so far. Must gain entry. Must penetrate defenses of mile-high railings. I mean, those railings are hardly a mile high. Bastard narrator, need lay eggs. Well, you could always, you know, go through the main gate. A plan so crazy it just might work. No refunds, please don't bank in the glass, it scares Jerry. Greetings, ticket buffoon. My name is Jerry, but okay, sir. How can I help you today? I wish to gain entrance, Jerry of Ticket Booth. Well, do you wish to buy a ticket, sir? Nah, that's fine. I don't want to piss behind any of your rides this year. I simply wish to find a fetid hole to lay my eggs in. You know, relatable. Understandable. Uh, okay, you definitely need to buy a ticket from us if you want to do that. How much would that cost? Two dollars. But I have zero dollars. Relatable. Tell me, young squire. Would you accept tales, stories, and other such whimsical parables as payment? No, no, I would not. Ah, shoot. I was so close, too. Hey, wait a minute. Aren't you that creep who lives in that tent next to the playground at the park? Oh no, my cover's been blown! Hey, look, sir, I'm only telling you this because your stench is just gonna drive away customers. If I let you loiter around here uninhibited for any longer... It's Valentine's Day today? Valentine's Day, isn't that for... romantic people? Ah, uh, yeah, but... Didn't you say that you had eggs to lay, or some other bizarre drivel to that effect? Uh, surely you have a maid of some kind if you're getting ready to lay eggs. Does the sock under my mattress count? Okay, fuck it. Now I'm cutting to the chase, because I can only take about three more dialogue options for you before my head combusts. Valentine's Day is a peep day for people who are, you know, in love. Is this love thing a type of feeling? I don't really do those, thanks. Well, sorta. Love is what happens when two grown-ups start craving more than just business handshakes and platonic ice cream breaks. Love makes two people want to go on romantic ice cream dates and drink all kinds of exotic elixirs and nectars together. Words, yes. Hello, Fist. When two grown-ups are in love, they'll make joint bank accounts together and go to the movies together to feed popcorn kernels to the rats and cockroaches there. You know, as you do. And then one day, if you're lucky, your partner will take the kids away forever and go marry Steve, the guy in your accounting firm who works in the same cubicle as you but makes 6% more year than you, and you can finally have a good night's sleep. 
Jerry, who hurt you? That's love, my scary friend. Speaking of which, we have a promotion on today, just for Valentine's Day. Two tickets for the price of one for couples who are in love. If you can somehow convince someone to bring you here, you can, I don't know, force them to pay you in, like a parasite? Granted, it'd take a real bastard to make it acquire. Oh, God fucking must source mate. Okay, uh, go do that. Away from here. <laughs> uh, I think the jerk option is to, like, have him outline me manipulating my way to get someone to pay for my $2 carnival ticket, and then immediately try to romance him. Hey, Ticket Jerry, are you by any chance free on Valentine's Day? I will call the police. <laughs> Root lost. <laughs> Scuttle away. <laughs> it's nice to finally be playing as a visual novel protagonist with, with a similar amount of uh, social acumen as myself. Dial Town, Chapter 1, The Fun Fair Date. Look at that sexy phone. Sure, what's something cool? Ah, tent, sweet tent. To find a well-functioning member of society to latch onto like a parasite, you'll have to leave your tent, you know. Uh... Damn, I hate moving, even when necessary. Can't I just lay my eggs here? Keep in mind, this tent freely occupies a relatively unwanted patch of grass at Dowtown's local park. AKA, you are dangerously close to at least four swans at any given moment while in this squalid tent. Ah, nice. Love me some Minecraft. Would your babies really be safe in here? Ah, shit, you're right. I hate it when you're right, narrator. Friendly reminder. You can bring up the main menu at any point, using the escape key. Thank you, Dev. Use this if you want to do something, but feel as though it may get you arrested or killed. Alright. Death percent speedrun, let's go. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> Adorable. Alright, let's open. oops. Let's open the menu here. I don't know what weapons World War III we fought with. I'm not a genius, Lamau. <laughs> what? Save that game. I do have a previous save, but that was just basically testing the game. Don't worry about it. Refresh the ins- Oh my god. <laughs> Refresh the inspirational quote. Behold the optionals. Coward of activate me. Back to the slot. Oh, uh, let's leave our tent and make- And, uh... Say, God has allowed me to survive another day, so it's about to be everybody's problem. And where else to definitely find a love interest but the nearby playground? Nothing can go wrong with this with this plan. Uh, this game is Dial Town Phone Dating Simulator, where I'm gonna pick all the jerk options. As for why? I know of the previous games this dev has made, and they let you be evil and generally have pretty good writing. To the nearby playground. Ah, the playground. As long as you stay exactly 25 feet from the perimeter of this zone of merriment, you shouldn't be legally prosecutable. Oh no. So, what now? Summon a nearby kid. Let's measure the ground. Make sure we're at the proper distance. Exactly 25.05 feet away. Point it. You know, 
Now might be a good time to reflect on child labor laws, why you're no longer legally allowed to get any closer to this very playground again in the first place. Shut! This narrator is sassy. I refuse to learn any lessons. I vibe with that. Rightio. Let us summon a child. Childer! Childer! Come gather round, Childer! Hey, Bozo, can I help you? Child. Yeah, I'm a child, what of it? I'm four foot seven, smell like grass, despite never touching it due to me having a grass app on my phone, and I take my crystal meth licorice flavor. Damn. Kids hardcore. Kids grow up so fast nowadays. Why, I remember when I was your age. A mere hatchling. Why, my tail hadn't even grown yet. Still waiting on that bad boy to regrow, but once it does... Okay, scary green man. Say, aren't you not allowed to get within 25 feet of this here playground? Joke's on you, you vertically stunted shitlord. I measured the ground before summoning you. Oh my god, would that have given me a game over if I hadn't? <laughs> also, apparently this game is more foul-mouthed than I expected, but you know what? I'm good with it. I'm just within an irresponsibly marginal, but still legal, distance. Ha. Ah. You're less than 25 feet from me right now, though. N uh uh we learned about two-digit numbers at school yesterday, so your reptile brain bullshit won't work on me this time, bozo. Well, double joke's on you, you little scrote. The law says that I can't get within 25 feet of the playground. Our main character is suspiciously well-informed about the terms of his restraining order. Not the little scrotes contained within its confines. I don't think that's how laws work, but you know what? Maybe they do in this world. Technically, you approached me. I win. So, if I go back to the slide, you won't be able to talk to me without shouting. Okay, see you later then, but please, no, I need intel. If this is the question about the birds and the beads, then I'm sorry, but my dad got really angry when I asked him about that for you. Turns out shit gets nasty when birds fuck. Oh my god, Little Bill is my favorite character. No, it's not that question, this time. Then, what is it? This is very weird. Delightfully weird. Uh, can you paint me into the fun fair? What are the new cool words? What do kids eat? <laughs> or nah, I'm done. Uh... Hmm. What is the jerk option? The jerk option is probably trying to extort money from a child. Can you pay me into the fun fair? Are you seriously begging from children now? Have you sunk that low? I was always capable of such things. There is no lower than I that I can sink to now. Sure, I guess, but like... I'm a literal child. You think I have money? Don't play dumb with me, Billy, you juvenile shit stain. <laughs> My god. I know your dad gives you pocket money for doing your weekly chores. Cough up. The money or your knee? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I bite. Uh, okay, forget the threatening part. I bit off more than I can chew. Come on, man. I'm desperate. I need some more damp and moist to lay my eggs. Okay, I'll stop you right there. I have two dollars and seven cents to my name. Which should only afford me one ticket. Uh... <laughs> ah, shit. Guess I'll just have to abandon you at the gates then. <laughs> well, see, that plan would have worked great had you not been stupid enough to just inform me of the caper before you could pull it off successfully. Ah, shit. 
outsmarted by a child. Yet again. Technically, I didn't outsmart you because I didn't figure jack shit out on my own. You just gave your plan away because you're an amphibian moron. Oh, right. Shit. Keep thinking, bozo. Sorry, pal, but you gotta make it on your own. I understand. Bitch. <laughs> oh, I can keep talking to him. What are the new cool words? Oh man, cool is the new drool. What you need are some quality slur- Oh no, what have I done? Screw it, this is Sin Day. I'm listening. Now, I'm sure you know all the popular ones, like calling an inexperienced rug salesman a Latin or refer to a slightly unfamiliar dog as a Groucho. But the mightiest slur of them all. Rungus. It's like a cheat code, but instead of unlocking you an extra life or more money, it just unlocks you a particularly painful death. Awful. Thanks for sharing. My pleasure, green one. Now, we done here or what? Say, what do kids eat? Are you trying to learn more kids a way to clean your tent again? My only option is to lie and say no. <laughs> no. You are, aren't you? Yes. No answer the question, you prepubescent shit stain. Well, personally, I consume an exclusive diet of glitter, modeling clay, chocolate milk, and chicken nuggets. Like most kids my age. You want to write this down? I can't really write. Oh, because you don't have a pen? <laughs> sure, why? <laughs> Home dog, slice man. So, what else do you want, bozo? Nah, fuck it, I'm done. You're dismissed, child. I do have a name, you know? Yeah, and I don't care to learn it. Be gone, stunted one. Alright, later, Bozo. Let us leave the playground. Mm, and check it out around the park. Ah, the park. You could go roll around on the nice spring grass. Unless you mind getting a few discarded syringes stuck in your arm. So, what now? D lie down in the grass. Maybe the syringes will have something helpful. It's relaxation time, friendos. You have friends? Shut! We're just lying on the grass, watching the clouds go by. <coughs> we just vibing. Ah, uh, isn't this just tranquil? It really is serene, quite serene, yes. It's good to get away from the big city. The one you're only, like, two yards further away from. Yeah, the peacefulness really helps me unclench the old sphincter, all right. Sure. Why don't I do this more often? Well, usually the grass here is laden with blades, syringes, and other unmentionables. Well, it's a good thing that... <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? Ah, fuck my arm. Oh god, oh fuck, oh shit, oh no. Ouch. Yeah, I think I can see a scratch or two, alright. This is why I hate nature and shit. Well, technically, syringes are completely man-made in use, so like, silence, narrator! Yeah, you might want to find a band-aid or ten. For a few of those little scrapes, if you can. Then again, you're penniless, and bandages don't exactly grow on trees. Oh, but you syringes grow in fields! Pain, pain, vast discomfort. How is that even remotely fair? Oh, shut up, you wounded crybaby. <laughs> Come on, back to the park we go, then. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> so I can basically do nothing in the park. Cool. Let us go to Uptown Dialtown. Ah, Uptown Dialtown. Home of everything and everyone. Not cool enough to be in Downtown Dialtown. So, what now? Let us summon a local hobo. Hobo of Dialtown, I summon thee. Oh, it's... It's just the dev. Okay, cool. <laughs> Yo! Hey, nice to meet you, friendo. The name's Hand. You need something? Are you indeed a hobo? Well, yeah, I do piss in dumpsters and sleep in alleyways and such, but being a hobo ain't my main gig. Yeah, the thing is, I'm kind of like... God and stuff. Oh good, you're crazy. I created everything around you right now and parted up the cosmos and the stars and shit. Yeah, I'm kind of a big deal, actually. You look like a hobo. Those things aren't mutually exclusive, friendo. So if you're God, then how did you end up creating everything? You ever, like, leave a takeout box in the corner of your room and forget to bin the box, only to find a new species of all from the remains of your chicken butt Thai curry from last month? <laughs> Kick me, I'm God! This world is my takeout box, and I'm the hungover dude gazing upon infinite possibility in disgust and awe. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. Yep, punch god. Punch god. You fool! I'm a god! How can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence! Could you be so naive? I... Okay, I appear to have just shit myself. You in this round, green one. Uh, are you drunk right now? Is it 11 a.m. yet? I'm awake and moving, so yes, it must be at least noon. Then I'm indeed moments away from severe liver, liver failure. Yes. Uh, if you're God, what's the meaning of life, then? You want me to come up with a reason for all of this existing? Don't you remember why you created the universe? I don't remember what I ate this morning. I probably ate trash, knowing me. So, can you, like, come up with the meaning of life right now? Nah, fuck that. Why don't you come up with the meaning of life? It'd probably be a million times more coherent than what I could think of. I don't think you know this protagonist very well, Hobo God. Uh, treat other people nicely, you'll be eaten merely a game, dear Hobo, or... <laughs> I think life has no meaning and that you're full of shit. I don't know, man. In fairness, I am full of shit, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> but there probably is a reason we're all here. What a... Whatever the heck that could be. Well, if the reason's so important, then how on earth could you forget it? Now hang on there, I've got enough people misquoting me as is. I simply stated that there probably was a reason, not that said reason made sense or was even remotely important. Please do remember, I'm just a little creature at the end of the day. I know not what I do. Aren't you also, like, God? Yeah, unless the tax man asks. You think having a yacht eats you straight into the top tax ban? Probably. Try legally owning the whole fucking universe and every bullshit creature residing in it. I pay my fair share in agony already, thank you very much, Mayor. Aren't you afraid that you'll get arrested for standing on the road? 
What is a traffic cop to a guy? Most traffic cops hold more power than you and you know it. <laughs> and what is a god to an, a god? Both these options are great. Uh, let's belittle it. Yeah, ouch. I mean, you aren't wrong. But still, that shit stings. Can you pay me into the fun fair, god? God, how much would that even cost? One, maybe even two dollars? Do I look like I have two dollars right now? Darn, I guess that explains why you're a smelly hobo dog. Yeah, that and I'm just too stubborn to live anywhere that I didn't create myself. But if you're God, didn't you create everywhere? Well, plants, trees, and shit anywhere outside? Yeah, I can take credit for that, sure. Buildings? Concrete? Dunno what you fucking onions are doing with rock, but it's blasphemy and I don't care from, for it much, much of it at all. But you sleep on a street. There's hardly more trees slash plants on this street than in, let's say, the park. You ever tried to lie down at the park? I have, actually. I swear, the bench there is the only human-length surface area not covered in used syringes and badger shit. You know I'm right. Plus, concrete aside, there's dumpsters aplenty around here. Free food, whenever you feel like it. Long gone are the days where cavemen would have to hunt squirrels with stone crossbows whenever they'd get peckish. Raccoons have already figured this out, by the way, and literally just scurry around and eat trash all day. Yeah, they're officially my chosen people now. You guys could learn a thing or two from those little stripy bastards. Hmm. Noted. What's your favorite hobby? You ever eaten blo broken glass or shiny rocks before? Oops. I don't recommend it, but still, don't knock it till you've tried it. Uh, I'm partial to the taste of gravel, myself. Gravel? What are you, some kind of weirdo? Yes. At least forage for normal things to eat if you're gonna scavenge. Like broken glass and shiny rocks. See? There we go. Okay, great. Thanks, God. Great to meet you. I gotta get going. Going so soon, eh? What's the rush? Uh... <laughs> I've merely grown tired of you. Fair? Okay, ciao! <laughs> Wait, where- Oh, okay, never mind. Okay, I've got more... Nice. Uh, let's go to the local bank. Maybe I can find someone money there. The bank, really? Why the bank? <laughs> Ticket jury said couples may j make joint bank accounts together. This is destiny, baby. So, if you're correct, you mean if Ticket Jerry is? Yes. Right, and if the bank is full of couples making joint bank accounts together, then I reckon your odds of finding a funfair mate there are practically zero, since everyone making a joint account would be, by definition, very much already taken. A bastard man. <laughs> save, save, save. What would you like to do? Let us ring for a teller. Hello, sir. Welcome to the Dial Town City Bank. My name is Karen Dunn. What? You're green. <laughs> yeah, I am. What of it? Oh, no offense meant, sir. I'm just wondering. Were you born like that, or...? 
Okay, sorry. That probably was a rude question to ask you. But were you? Born is a really nice way of putting it. Sounds far more elegant than hatched or crawled out of that gutter over there. Or, oh lord, contain it before it lays eggs! Alright, yes, okay, thank you for clearing that up. Now, were you hoping to make a transaction, sir, or... Uh... <laughs> so what exactly is money, then? Look, sir, I often fail to detect sarcasm, but... Come on, surely that's a jest. <laughs> y yeah, it was a joke. I am an upstanding member of the society that we live in. Why? Fantastic. Is that all, then? Uh... Jerk option. Ask about, ab about her head. Yeah, it's a printer. I know that's fairly atypical, but believe me, sir, I get this every day. How does that work for you? I don't have anyone working for me. I'm an employee. I mean, how does it work? We think you have seen a printer before, right? Yeah, thanks. Is having a printer instead of a typewriter different in day-to-day -day life? Well, I wouldn't know truly because I've had a printer forehead for as long as I can remember, so I have no point of comparison. It's all I know, you know? I know, yes. Still, people get uppity about how I express myself. And why's that? Well, most typewriters print out pages with words on them. I produce pictures. People don't really like that. Oh, well, I don't blame them. It is pretty whack-ass. Why, you? It's who I am, sir. I don't need your approval to be complete. Nice. Otherwise, you'd be pretty fucked, then. Here at DTCB Inc., we don't tolerate abuse or rudeness directed towards staff. Unless you have a lot of money, that is, then feel free to piss on everything. I don't, but I shat, but shall anyway. The world is my toilet, so try to stop me. Security! We've got another pisser. Root lost! I'm just alienating everyone. Scamper away whilst howling like a wounded coyote. Great, we've struck out with another love interest. Uh, leave the area? What happens if I go right back to the local bank? Let me try saving first. I would like to go back to the local bank. Hello, it's me, again! On further inspection, it seems that the rope on the bell has been replaced with a string of licorice. Can I attempt to ring the bell? Since the licorice won't make any noise and will just squish around in your hands, no. Can I at least devour the licorice? You would like licorice, wouldn't you? I'm so hungry, please. I beseech thee, I am extraordinarily pregnant. Fine, fine, go ham. Nom the licorice. Okay, next time I want to eat something, remind me that I don't. That noise was horrifying. Well, do you feel complete now? As hollow as ever before. Right, yes. Well, at least I caused some problems on purpose. Let me go to the local cinema. What would you like to do now? I summon an employee in attack mode. 
Hey, sir, welcome to... Hang on, just a jiffy. Green skin, five, no, six nipples. Your head, made from stitched together flash, or perhaps a skillful combination of burlap and leathers? Hi! Can I feel your head? Whoa, Oliver, we're moving a little fast here. Buy me dinner first, or buy me into the fun fair. Please touch my flesh head. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> hey, look, I know this might be kind of forward, but... You do know that it's Valentine's Day today, right? N no, this is the first time hearing them. So yeah, the first needless dishonesty. I'm well aware, yes. Well, I was just wondering... Would you like to perhaps, you know, go on a date with me tonight? Wait, you're asking me out? Well, duh. I'm surprised. I did not see this eventuality coming. This isn't an awfully common event. Give me one reason why I wouldn't want to ask you out. I've got about six reasons. They're all nipples. <laughs> And they're green. I asked for a reason why I wouldn't ask you out. Not for six perks for doing so. You're a strange little goblin, man. Guilty as charged, you gnarliness. So, how about it? <laughs> I'm gonna take it tonight, get lost, nerd. <laughs> why would you lie this needlessly? Uh, okay, so I don't want to piss off every love interest so I can actually progress in the game. So, this guy is going to be, like, my safety date. So, let me just be like, I don't know, man, I might need some further convincing. What can you do for me? Hmm. Oh, I know. I'll let you choose the venue if you want. Fun fair. Oh man, you want to go to the fun fair with me? Gnarly! I haven't been there in forever! I need to state this for legal reasons, I'm sure. This might be less of a purely romantic engagement. And more of a me laying my eggs at the fun fair kind of arrangement. He's probably gonna be into that, let's be real. Wait, you're... Are you... an egg layer? Uh... I certainly hope I'm a ham. I'm not emotionally ready to give birth to puppies. Dude! I mean, I love puppies as much as the next fellow too, but... Whoa! I can't believe I... Okay, look, I'll cut you a deal. I'm kind of working on a movie right now. See, this place ain't doing so groovy right now. On account of a few disturbing rumors about the building. But I'm hoping that producing a film here in Dialtown and then hosting some sort of gnarly premiere and blow the lid off of just how gnarly this place truly is. And, you know, and save the business, most importantly. Having footage of a genuine egg laying, one that takes place right here in town, no less, why? I can see this movie having a truly bodacious premiere. I can't believe that I, gave, I started giving him a surfer kind of voice immediately, and it's paying off, because he's using words like gnarly and bodacious. You want me to lay eggs? On camp? Yeah, alright. Maybe it does sound like a lot. But, you'd be doing us a major solid. Plus, those eggs have to be laid anyway, right? And you are looking for someone to pay you in. This is like symbiosis and junk. 
So I'd be... a star? In the same way your average porn star or local raving lunatic caught on camera in an internet viral video would be, yeah. You need someone to take you, and I need a performer. We can kill two condors with one trident. <laughs> I'll do it for my future offspring, Lings. This sounds hot. I'm in. Wouldn't I lose my an 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 this sounds hot. I'm in. Fuck yeah! Groovetacular. Truly radical. Alright, so, thing is, I've got a little more time left on the clock before my shift officially ends. How long, Oliver? Precisely four minutes. Yes. How will I occupy myself for four whole minutes? Well, you could always take a quick look around, see what the cinema has to offer. We're on a tight ship here, and it's all the tighter for being stuck together by the mystery adhesive this place seems to secrete. That doesn't sound shady at all. This is an extraordinarily sticky premises, yes. <laughs> I feel like the carpet is trying to make sure I don't leave. Oh, yeah, it does that. Doors occasionally close in and lock in themselves to stop people from getting out. The place needs company, hence why I sleep on the floor sometimes. Only sometimes. You know what? I think this protagonist and this theater employee are meant to be together. Is How do you pry yourself off of the carpet in the morning? With extraordinary difficulty. Okay, go get to know the place. I'll meet you outside in four minutes. <laughs> Let me call him by the wrong name. Sure thing, Pete. Is that a reference of some kind? My name's Oliver. You do know that, right? Good for you, kid. Bye. I don't know what the different colors necessarily... No, there it was again! There it was again! There was like a weird thing on the loading screen. Didn't let... I'm I'm gonna go back in the VOD and see what that is. That's gonna drive me crazy if I don't. Movies this way. No refunds. My tales are on the house. Generic remake number 17. You like the story before? Maybe you'll like it even better with CG. I don't care for this place very much. Why is that, dear narrator? Okay, so like... This place is obviously incredibly haunted. Nah. Yes! Actually, I should probably give the narrator their own voice. Hmm. They seem to be sort of smarmy. It is extraordinarily haunted. Nah, man. What makes you think that? Look. The walls are bleeding. Okay, we don't know for a fact that it's blood. It could be ketchup for all we know. Do you consider the walls keep seeping ketchup from its pores honestly any less abnormal? Okay. <laughs> but it could be some kind of jam or nectar too. None of those are normal substances for a movie theater wall to secrete. Well, whatever it is. There's only one way to find out. Oh, please don't. Yes. I'm begging you. Don't lick that. Worry not, it could be jam. Wall jam is not good jam. I've made my mind up. Okay, it is blood. But it's not my blood, so I care very little. In fact, I'm relieved. It's blood, though. Yeah, but it's not mine, so, uh... Why should I care if it hasn't been stolen from my body? Perhaps I should have known. It's the wrong color, anyway. You really don't get this, do you? What I don't get is why I shouldn't just go somewhere else. You know, to shut you up. Fine, fine. Besides, I'm sure there's hardly anything here more unsettling than literal blood on the wall. Okay, what the fuck, children? 
two of them. They're just staring right at you. Yeah, kids do that. I don't like their energy. They're evil, Vimbert. Evil! You want to attempt communication? I don't speak Latin nor crayon. Wait, do kids speak Spanish? These particular ones might just speak the same tongue as you and me. Whoa, no way. Say something to them. Hey, children, I... How would you like to clean up, clean my tent? Why is this always your go-to? Come play with us. Okay, fuck this. Let's skedaddle. No, no. Let's hear them out. What game do you want to play, dear children? IDK. A word search, maybe? Sorry, no can do. I'm kind of illiterate. Feel free to complete it on your own, though. Okay, we understand. Thoroughly. Have a nice day. Huh. I had no idea kids nowadays could use Gaussian blur like that. Can we please just leave this accursed place? Fine, fine. I reckon a good four minutes is... Wait, 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 wait. Listen to me, honey dear. Something's wrong with you, I fear. It's getting harder to please you, harder and harder each year. After you get what you want, you don't want it. If I gave you the moon, you'd grow tired of it soon. Something, something. You want what you want when you want it. Always weeping and wanting. Is that a garden gnome? Weird. Fine, fine. I reckon a good four minutes has passed, anyhow. Hey, pal, you were gone a good six minutes. Figured you might, uh, just skedaddled, so to speak. So, how'd you find the place? Uh, you ever been to Chernobyl? Stickier than my tent. Didn't know that was possible. Because this guy is into the weird. So we can get weird and jerky with him, and he'll be like, dude, awesome. This guy's perfect. He's perfect for this protagonist. Yeah, see, my boss reckons that a joint can only get so sticky. Me? I think it's like a black hole. How so? Well, you know how black holes are so strong that no light can escape them, hence they appear invisible to telescopes? No, but go on. I reckon that if a place was sticky enough, you just, like, get stuck forever and nobody would find out. So, basically, the only way to find out how sticky the place is would be to touch it, trapping you and preventing others from finding out how sticky the place truly is. I call it the Oliver Uncertainty Principle of Stickiness. You're full of ideas, aren't you? Mostly about stickiness, grime, and filth. Yes siree. Anyway, I was wondering if you wanted to get going. The way I figure it, the sooner we get this footage done, the more time we'll have to enjoy ourselves. Uh, you want to spend time with me after the laying? <laughs> uh, egg laying takes time, my dear Olive Man. You can't rush perfection. Groovy, right, I guess not. But I find that heavily pregnant people tend to want to give birth as soon as possible. Have you ever met a pregnant person? We don't allow heavily pregnant people in the cinema in case they give birth on premises and overload the stickiness equilibrium that we work so hard to maintain. So is that a no? Do roaches count? Absolutely not. Does my mom count? If you're referring to when she was pregnant with you, then no. Ah, right. Anyway, let's just get going. We can continue chatting on the way there. Yo.
You know, I'm aware of the Funfair's two-for-one ticket thing going on today, but I sincerely doubt you're allowed to just piggyback onto my subway ticket. Unlike the Funfair, this concrete jungle holds no love in its pores. Just damp, which I doubt can even be considered much of an emotion at all. Oh please, as if there's any point paying for a ticket. Have you ever seen a human down here, in uniform? No, I mean... I bought my ticket from a machine, granted. This is a truly lawless subterranean frontier. And you know what? That even holds true around Denver. You get on most of the trains, they're not gonna check if you actually have a ticket. You can get away with just sneaking on trains. Don't do it, unless you are so hard up that you can't afford the, like, four bucks or whatever, but... It's a thing you can do. Don't always necessarily recommend it, but... On a side note, thanks for agreeing to do this again. I know you're benefiting from this too, but believe me, you're doing us a major solid. It's my pleasure, Olive Man. No idea if me squatting and grunting on camera is gonna help a whole lot though. Believe me, it will. Honestly, with the rumors going around about the joint, Mr. Dickens is worried the joint mightn't still be in business come this time next year. Mr. Dickens? Oh, Mr. Dickens is my boss. Yeah, he owns the cinema I work at and always has. He's a top-notch guy, a real class act. Old British chap, full of vitality. He built the very cinema I work at in the 1960s as a young entrepreneur. Are you close to him? I sure as heck am, daddy -o. I was only a starry-eyed lad, a mere manling when I got my job at the cinema. Taught me everything I know about being a man. I don't understand. Right, right. You haven't met Mr. Dickens. He has impeccable style, you know. Wears his old suits, uses old British words slash terms, always keeps level head. But you said you learned everything from him, right? Right. But you don't talk like a pirate, nor constantly mention fish and chips. Yes, that's definitely how British people sound. Well, no, see, Mr. Dickens' last piece of advice for me was... There's nothing better than for a man to do than be an individual tally-ho. Did you add in the tally-ho, or did he actually say it like that? I honestly can't remember. Anyway, I have to find my own path, wear my own clothes, use my own outdated and frankly underrated slang, daddy-o. When we get back, I'll definitely introduce the two of you to each other. In a way, you kind of remind me of him with the whole doing your own thing, regardless of others laughing or being repulsed by you, thing you've got going on. Normality's overrated, take it from me. I... Oh shit. That's kind of a raw line. I've never seen a happy person in a suit. Rebuttal. Weddings. Well, shit, that's fair, Oliver. You think they'd let me anywhere near a wedding? Well, what if you were to get hitched? Is that something you'd ever want to do? Unless it's to a big <laughs> titty giraffe, doubtful? Why is that my only dialogue option? <laughs> That's honestly a response I didn't see coming. Well, I've got my reasons not to. Such as? Oh, the usual reasons. I'm not exactly prime rib, you know. Green skin, a few too many nipples, stitched together fleshy bonehead. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that, actually. No, I was nowhere near phone Kennedy on the date of... My nipples can only shoot so far, I... 
It's an absolutely riveting diversion, but no, what I meant was... Your phone head? Did you construct it yourself? That's quite a personal question. I know, I know, I should know better to ask, but... I've never seen one so... different before. It's... a custom, I guess you could say. Huh. I don't know if you built it yourself, per se, but... How far back was the bell mechanism placed relative to the vestigial cord adapter? That's quite a specific question. Bold of you to assume I'd understand any of those fancy schmancy words. Like, cord. Sorry, I guess I'm just technically minded. Always enjoyed dismantling stuff, then putting them back together. Rare for an artist, I suppose. Which is why Mr. Dickens gets so much use out of me. I know how to load reels into our machines and what ought to be on them. Hell, I'm the only one Big Bertha lets perform maintenance on her. She's our movie projector and boy is she temperamental. So Dickens keeps you busy then? Well, yeah, but that's how it's gotta be when you work with the public, I suppose. Of course, you do tend to get customers that... Sorry, I shouldn't badmouth customers, especially given how dire things have been lately, financially speaking. Nonsense. The beans. Spill them. I crave gossip. Oh, alright, alright. I guess it's not like he ever buys anything from us anyway. We have this one little shit stain. His name is Billy. Little Billy. You know that brat? He ratted on me to the police. Got me done in for child labor laws. Aw, oh, man, that's not cool. I'm sure the judicial system's incredibly biased towards green people. I sprayed in the courtroom. It's a god-awful state of affairs. Yeah, this kid. This fink, he's just... We have a rule at the cinema. It's one of my bosses, obviously. The customer is always exempt from violence. That rule... complicates dealing with that yard-high snot-nosed brat. Little Billy doesn't know a reason. He simply wishes to watch the world burn. Thank you! Finally, someone else who sees it! You see, we're both into, we're both into like, weird spooky stuff. We both hate kids. This is a perfect match. Oliver and I, we, we bros. We bro Manson right now. You know, maybe we turn that to regular Manson. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, Oliver. I'm put- you're high up on my list. I swear, that rug rat gets his kicks from inconveniencing me, just because he knows that I can only politely ask him to leave and retort. Because if I put my hands around him, no more job. It fucking sucks. The wee fucker can bring in a megaphone, skateboard around, run in a muck, hitting other customers in the ankles with his board. Yet, I can only use words when dealing with the situation because he's a child. He's not a child. He's some kind of fun-sized demon. It sucks being an adult and having to use other children to settle disputes by proxy. Because if I dropkick a child, oh boy! Screw kids getting too soft. Half of them are armed. I'm afraid of the idea of having those shitheads everywhere when I get old, and end up defenseless like a tortoise stuck on its back. When I get to that point, shoot me in the stomachs. Why did you just pluralize the word stomach? No, 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 no reason, no reason, don't worry. Sick. Oh, hold on, I think we're outside near the outskirts of town. You ready to get off? Well, I'm either laying my eggs here or there. 
Given the option, I'd rather there. Yeah, plus, I kinda want sole ownership of the footage till the movie is finished. After all, I'm hardly gonna get many butts on seats if some hipster has the whole gory ordeal uploaded for free on phone tube, now am I? Wait, is that like... Is that a porn site? Are you happier not knowing? If the answer is yes, it is a porn site, then yeah, I most certainly am. I'll just not specify in that case. Fuck you, now I know which answer was the correct one. Are people going to be aroused by this? Hey. Gotta drag the monster fucker crowd in somehow, right? You see? Oliver knows his audience. This is a smart filmmaker right here. You gotta cater to the monster fuckers. Oh boy. Hi, me again. Just serving you up a little final slash one-time reminder. You can access the menu at any time using the escape key. If you need to change any settings or save the game at any time. Also, to make completion of playthroughs easier, I've added this baby to the top of the screen. Route Diverging Choice. It appears every time a Route Diverging Choice occurs, reminding you to save at that moment. That's very kind. It means you can reload and get another ending, allowing you to try other endings out without any backpedaling. Thank you, and don't forget, better save than sorry. Thank you, Dev. Sup, Jerry? Take it, Jerry! No! Yes. A deal is a deal, you festive gate blocker. I win! Why did you... How did you... I didn't think you'd actually. Of course. Of course, it'd be Oliver of all people. I reiterate, sup, Jerry. Oliver. Why? Why would you... I don't get what you're insinuating, Jerry. Ooh, is there, like, history between these two? Ooh, the spiciness. Why on earth would you take him here? I think a better question is, why on earth wouldn't I, dearest Jerry? Oliver, he's got green skin. I know! Isn't it gnarly? Uh, uh, Oliver, he's got six nipples. Six for the price of two. What a bargain. His head is clearly comprised of stolen skins, all stitched together crudely. Crude? I'd like to see your needlework, ticket man. You shut up. Oliver, he only asked you here so he can lay his green eggs somewhere on the funfair ground. Oh, I know, and I'm totally into it, too. I even brought a camera so I can film it in its awe-inspiring, oostacular depravity. Dear Lord. Of course. Of course it'd be Oliver, of all people, who'd be into this. What can I say, Jerry? It's hip to fuck monsters. Yeah, Jerry. Now, how about two tickets for me and my adoring talent? The tickets, cough them up, pretty boy. But fine, that'll be two dollars then. Hell yeah. All right, Finbert, you ready to go inside? Encouraging ape noises. <laughs> hey, can you try to make those noises during the laying itself? I think I'm gonna bomb it. Poor Jerry. <laughs> oh man, I haven't been here in forever. Because of the danger? What? Heck no. Being smushed by a derailed mouse garden 
Scraped off the ground as a red pancake is exactly how I want to go. When I get old, take me here. The universe will take care of the rest. So, where do you want me to stand? Huh? What do you mean? Oh, for the footage. You are going to lay your eggs, right? Well, not now, Oliver. Jeez, let a guy get ready first. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Alright, how about now? What, out in the open amongst the common rabble? I think not, pervert. Sorry, sorry. I just presumed, since you're, like, heavily pregnant and whatnot. Okay, how about this? How's about we go frolic, have a groovy time, then you can let me know when you're down for us to get shoot. That sounds quite agreeable, yes. Very fun, very much so. Yes. <laughs> Bumper cars. Cotton candy. Oh man, I haven't been to a fair myself in so long. Watching the fireworks, holding hands. What a lovely day these two are having. Oh, they're definitely not commercially motivated date. Alright, here's the spot. What do you mean? This. This is the perfect spot to lay your eggs. Oh, I see. No, no, listen. Accessible location. Spitting distance from the hot dog stand. Just off the beaten path enough to be avoided by civilian foot traffic. And or ride operators. And best of all, lots of disturbed dirt for you to use to bury your young, in order to conceal them from potential predators. Man, you've really thought this through. Horrible location, very incompetent, utterly embarrassing. Actually, no, he makes he makes good points, he makes good points. Do I normally lay eggs in water like a frog? I can't remember. Wait, are you an amphibian? I've seldom tried to drown myself, so I'm not certain. Hey, that's fine. I can just pour a couple of two-liter bottles of coal onto the mound. Then it'll be plenty aquatic. Right, then the sun bakes the soda into the mound, and it'll get all sticky. How are my kin to survive if they hatch already stuck to the ground? I mean, this location has other perks, too. Like... Good lighting to film with the camera. Oh, I see what this is. You've even got a little stage light set up. Oh, come on, it's not like that. It's just, well, we did make a deal. One ticket for one filming. Come on, man, don't hold out on me. Fine, fine, I'll just lay the- <laughs> Censored, you'll thank me when you're older. Did, did you get it? Every oozing second. You also got them all in the hole, even without ample preparation. Very impressive. <laughs> Thanks, I'm a master of steering my own ass. Years of expertise? You know it, hon. I still don't understand, though. Why do you care so much about some biohazardous cinema's closure? Why go to all this trouble? Look, I've truly explained the basics to you already. Definitely. The theater is dying due to the rumors about the place being haunted. But it's greater than that, truly. Our cinema, each and every cinema, in fact, is destined to go the way of the dodo at this rate. Wait, all cinemas? What makes you say that? The same reason that video rental stores and the creepy mustachioed dude selling bootleg VHS tapes door-to-door -door died out. Spinny disc players? What? 
No! The internet! Isn't that the cat name databa database with porn? Yeah, but now they've got videos. Non-pornographic ones, too. <laughs> Not that I know anything about that. They've got entire sites dedicated just to showing movies. With directors beginning to just put their movies straight up on there, not even considering physical theaters. Well, why would people leave their own familiar hobbles when they could just watch the same movie even cheaper online? So, why do you care? This just sounds like advancement, evolution. It's more convenient for everyone. It's not like that. The cinema employs me and Mr. Dickens. You can just get a job on one of those sites. You said it yourself, you're technically minded. You'd excel it. It's not me that I'm worried about. It's Mr. Dickens. He's old, set in his ways. He's extraordinarily savvy at running a physical business, but I know he wouldn't bridge the gap. The physical slip silver screen is all he knows. Truth is, as much as I love the cinema, it's Mr. Dickens that I feel truly indebted to. He's given me so much, taught me so much, he's like a father to me. He told me once that showing movies to the world has been his dream ever since he was my age. His dream dies, a part of him does too. I can't allow that to happen. Not sitting down, anyway. I know we can get people to come back. We can release something truly engaging. Something new. Something people can't find anywhere else. I know people would love to hear a new story, even if it's weird. Hey, it kind of sounds like the development ethos behind this game. If it's one they can connect with. Look, this footage. I'm not just asking you to do this for me. I'm asking you to do this for Mr. Dickens and his dream. I know it's a lot to ask to allow yourself to become vulnerable before a whole town of people who've spurned you, all for a man you've never even met. But maybe you understand the importance of dreams like I do. Or maybe you'll do it for me? Ooh, root diverging choice. Let me drop a save. First, I shall choose the jerk option. Sorry, but I can't let you do that. No dice. I can't say I'm not disappointed, but I understand. Can I at least ask what your reasons for saying no are? Uh... We made a one-time egg-laying arrangement. I'm not ready to be a movie star. I see. That's fair. You are an undocumented species, after all. With how difficult he is to film, I can't imagine Bigfoot's any less camera shy, frankly. Ruby, glad we're at an agreement. Yeah. Radical. Look, I know the footage isn't being used, but... This movie isn't exactly going anywhere fast. Plus, I may have fibbed to Mr. Dickens a bit, but just how much the movie was done... He thinks it's near completion, doesn't he? A bit, yeah. Look, two heads are better than one, unless you're like... A mutant dual-headed cow. Then the second head is really just a nuisance. But I think your fleshy green phone head could be of real use to me. What are you asking? I'm asking if you'd like to co-direct my movie. Wait, me? Why me of all people? Well, putting it lightly. You're weird. <laughs> but weird's groovy. I like weird. Yeah, I figured that out at all. 
I bet you have a story in you that hasn't ever been told. And that's the kind of story I want to tell. Look, I don't need you to decide right now. But if you're interested, you'll know where to find me tomorrow. Off topic, uh, you think you're going to be able to make it home on your own? Leave me in the dirt. This is how it's going to be. Right, I thought so. I mean, I could call a taxi for you in an hour or so. I refuse to be placed on the back seat of another taxi. <laughs> Child locks are my mortal nemesis. I didn't escape a le zoo to end up right back in captivity. You didn't escape the what? Okay, look. We'll chat tomorrow, right? I have a gnarly night, Granite, so thanks for that. See you tomorrow, Vimbert. Goodbye, on Bon voyage! Wait. Congrats. You just let your ride leave. <laughs> this is Dialtown, phone dating simulator, where I am a weird person with a phone for a head dating other people with phones for heads, and I am picking all of the jackass or jerk options. Ah, uh, it'll be fine. I'll just... Are you falling asleep in the dirt? Papa's tired. Come on, man. Not in the same dirt you just sprayed on. Okay, you're already asleep. Fuck. And apparently that is- oh, never mind, that is not the end. I was like, and apparently we just died. Chapter 2, Gnarly Dude. So yes, we found it- oh. Hello, Dialtown. Rachel from the Dialtown News Network. This just in. Certain Dialtown citizens seem to be afflicted. Afflicted, something known socially as the bone cramps. These head cramps are manifesting in migraine-like symptoms, making it difficult for bone-headed citizens to get calls at. We interviewed one such citizen who reported having the inability to make any calls at all. But, of course, given that this particular citizen had a typewriter for a head and not a phone, we forwarded her name to the Dialtown Insane Asylum for collection. Our second story for today, Dialtown has a new fan club who are known simply as the Leather Caressers. Yes, folks, leathers, burlaps, cloths, and silks. These people really seem to love fabric, evidently. Following Mayor Mingus's new mental health guidelines, we forwarded all known leather caressing affiliates' names to the Dialtown Insane Asylum for collection. Our final story, it seems like the Dialtown Insane Asylum is suffering from overcrowding, and experts aren't sure why. We urge all citizens following this story, if you find yourself stressed from the news of downtown social services falling apart around you, feel free to give us a call, so we can forward your names to the downtown Insane Asylum for collection. Yeah, this is a game I played five minutes of, and was like, this is the most bizarre game I've ever played. I need to stream the rest of this blind. So I have no idea what insanity is coming next, Celtic. <laughs> Currently, all I've done is found a weird dude who worked at the theater who was into me being a weird monster person who needed to lay my eggs, and then filmed me doing it. And the narrator keeps snarking to me. Nope, not doing the shuffle. Uh, this is just me playing this game. Uh, yesterday I was a little busy and I didn't do the shuffle. Good morning, rise and check. Ah, fuck, my eyes. Where am I? This is the fun fair, Vimbert. You fell asleep in the dirt last night, don't you remember? I did? Yeah, you like totally passed out after you laid your eggs. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I think a couple people did, but I had I have got family in town, so. It'll be back next weekend, worry you not. Oh, you were also busy? Well that works out. 
Oh, I remember now. Lie. That's a lie, isn't it? Yes, entirely. My mind is a haze of billowing TV static. How on earth do you say such poetic tripe? Yet somehow your words devolve into occasional ape speech. Ugh. Brain need charge. Excellent strain battery. Right. Look. Are you gonna wander off aimlessly or not? Fine, yes. Let's wander. <laughs> oh. What were you? Did you just come out of there right now? Take it, Jerry. I don't feel so well. Answer the question! Only slightly. Why didn't you leave last night? I came in my pants and fell asleep off his Jesus Christ. <laughs> Stop talking. What I don't get is why you left at all if nobody knew you were in there. Shit. Jerry, can I get back in? Well, do you have two dollars for tickets, sir? You know I don't, you rat bastard. Let me back in or else. Or else what? Or else I'll squirt. I believe you. Do you want me to... I want you to leave. Okay, okay, leave I shall. Goodbye, Ticket Jerry, my truest friend and ally. We are neither friends nor allies. <laughs> How much longer till home? We're already in uptown, so it's not much longer now. I despise walking. If only I had a scooter. Excuse me, imagine the havoc you would wreak on a scooter, Vimbert. Pure pandemonium! Nah. -uh. Trusting you with a scooter would be akin to trusting Bigfoot with a loaded firearm. Which I would absolutely do. I don't know why I thought to use that as a counter-argument. You obviously would do that. This is so sad. Can we give Bigfoot a fucking gun? Come on, I thought this was America. You know, we are right outside the cinema all of our works have come to think of it. We could take him up on the whole co-director offer he gave us last night and kill an afternoon behind the camcorder. Yeah, could do. Or I could just go home and decompose. I like the sound of that. Oh, sure, but what then? Follow the main step of the Prime Directive, which is doing nothing at all, no matter the cost. Yeah, but you also require constant stimulation. Why are you so entitled, anyhow? You can't just expect entertainment to just... I can and I will. I am a king. A green king. A king? Hal, you live in a tent. Yet you demand entertainment comes to you whenever you want it. You dine on rotten meats, haphazardly disguising the meat's ill freshness with spices and... Holy shit, you do live like a king. Divine royalty is as much a burden as it is a blessing, dear narrator. Look, I don't trust you. Spend the day on your own. Oliver will keep you out of trouble, or at the very least, try to avoid letting you out of his sight long enough for you to wander into incoming traffic. Besides, by helping him out, you'd be doing him a real solid. <laughs> Who am I, Mother Teleresa? Fuck good vibes. Well, at least consider it a potentially good waste of a day, then. Look, there'll be plenty of time to nap or stare at wet paint or whatever inane tasks you have set out for tomorrow. <laughs> Another route diverging choice. Interesting. I feel like this is the game letting me, like, try and save it. Uh, but we're doing Jerker Eat. Well. I don't know, the theater seems pretty evil. I think it's still an evil choice to help him save this haunted theater. Fine, fine, I'll go visit the man. That's the spirit. Why, you could become the new Steven Speaksberg or Stanley Kubrick. Those names are awful. And so are you. Hey, at least my japery has a point. FYI, spiel already means talk, so Speakberg is just stupid. 
Ooh, that is a sad. Not a cigar man myself, but I know it's important to have a good cigar cutter. Are you going to visit Oliver or not? Fine, fine, let's. I have arrived. Yo, Finbert, you came. Yes. Man, I'm so glad. A minute longer and I wouldn't have been able to ask for the afternoon off. Well, I'm here. The narrator made me come. The narr... Can you... Do you think there's a... Okay, whatever. I can work with this. Maybe you'll be better at narrative storytelling this way. An excel at not but for foraging for shiny rocks? But thank you, anyway. Oh, this'll be so fun! Frankly, I hope the excitement won't be too much for your body after last night. Ah, that's fair. Oh no, there's a winky face option. Uh, nonsense, my bod's solid. I'm like a rock. Rock or not, you did shoot five bowling ball-sized objects out of your sphincter. Where were your organs during all this? <coughs> no matter. You're here now, so... Alright, here's the hap, Slice Man. I must go parlay with my dearest employer, so I can leave my post with his permission, of course. Capiche? What? I gotta tell Mr. Dickens that I'm taking the rest of the day off. Oh, right. So... You want to go outside, or perhaps wander around the cinema aimlessly again? Aimless wandering is a fantastic waste of time, and an adequate, adequate way to burn off some excess calories. Nah, I've had my fill of aimless wandering for today. Say, why don't I watch the counter for you? What could possibly go wrong? Oh, I'd know about that. Mr. Dickens mightn't see it so groovy that I let a... An unvetted person watched the till, you know. I demand it. Aw, oh, jeez. A demand? What do I say? Say yes. Wave hand whimsically. You will let me man the counter. Is that meant to be some kind of forceful mind trick? Please? I'm still not totally convinced. But what if a customer comes while you're gone? The place is deserted, man. It's a ghost town in here. But what if little Billy shows up? With the counter unsupervised, my god. He could squat all over your popped corn and piss straight into the till. <laughs> Imagine how much stickier the buttons would become. You'd be unable to even open the register. The place would be doomed. Oh, all right, all right. I'll only be a moment anyway, okay? So, try not to light anything on fire, all right? I make no promises. Please don't light anything on fire. <laughs> I promise not to light any fires, lie. How can I start a fire with a cash register and some napkins? We lie. I don't believe you. You are wise not to. Okay, I'll be back very soon and... Oh! Yeah, don't touch the soda fountain under any circumstances. Why not? I'll explain when you're older. Right, ciao! What the hell did you mean by that, Oliver? What did you mean by that? Hmm... Drink connector? Soda juice? I can't believe it's not soda. Sody pop. Don't you dare- I'm not touching it. I could get a closer look at it, though. Do not. He didn't say that I couldn't examine it. Alright, you've examined it. Now let's- I'm gonna touch it. Touch it? Hey, he didn't say that I couldn't touch it. 
He absolutely said exactly that. Do not shut. <laughs> Papa's thirsty. Now, let's see here. What? Why? <laughs> okay, yep, that's a finger. Ew. Sh should I... Do not drink the... Hey, 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 Vimbrin! I'm... You touched the machine, didn't you? Yes. Yes, I did. Why would you do that after I told you specifically not to? I've never behaved before in my entire life. I simply refuse to start now. This protagonist is all about causing problems. I love it. How'd you know? Anyhow. Well, the pungent aroma of liquid flesh is now circulating throughout the room, for a start. I'm sorry, Oliver. I was just so thirsty. Boy, ain't that relatable content. You want me to buy you a can of pop in a nearby convenience store? Please? Oh, before we go, I guess I wanted to ask you a few questions about the movie we're filming before we choose where we're gonna film it. Uh, can't we just stumble blindly and drunkenly towards failure? It works for me. What is this, an elementary school presentation on Millard Fillmore's presidency? I demand only the best from our cinematic excursion. No, what I meant was, what should the movie be about? I don't understand, it's all just moving pictures, isn't it? Schmucks watch and cry, Look, Pa, look how the images flicker and dance on the screen! There's a little more to it than that. Like? Plots, characters, themes, music, dialogue... Uh, let's just film a rock in black and white for an hour and call it a day. Am I a character? In the context of reality, yes. You are indeed quite a character. In the context of the movie, no, because you explicitly told me you didn't want to be in the movie. Yeah, I said I didn't want to be shown laying eggs in the movie. You could use me in other ways. Well, then. That changes things. But, green manpower aside, we still need to figure out what genre we're aiming for. John Rack. You know, the type of movie we want to make. How on the feeling we want to evoke from our audience. Uh, let's go for Dread. Oh, like horror. No, Dread. It's completely different. Well, how would you define dread? Footage of cups too close to table edges and pigeons playing on busy roads? We're trying to entertain Dialtown, Vimber. Not torture them. Oh, if torture was so bad, then how come it was so big in the Middle Ages? Except me. So was cholera and an average life expectancy of 30, but I'm sure nobody misses those. Okay, but on the life expectancy note... Have you ever met a millennial that seems genuinely thankful to be alive? <laughs> uh, touché, but still. We need to decide on a real emotion for a film to convey. Well, that won't be torturous for our audience to sit through. So, no. No dread, I'm afraid. We could shoot a comedy. Are you any good at telling jokes? If the rest of this game is anything to go by... I don't think either of us are gonna become suddenly well-written or funny. <laughs> ah, I love it. The fourth wall break. I have no idea what any of that means, but fair enough. Suddenly, Dread seems all the more viable. We could do a chick flick, but I don't think you'd really rock a long blonde wig. Are you kidding me? I'd be fucking fabulous, Oliver. 
How dare you, I absolutely would. If I did your nails up, hon, you'd get started by a seagull or something, then scratch someone's face open. Yeah, okay, that's fair. I am quite fair. No, no, we need something... something that'd appeal to a large base of people. What do you think the people would want to see? Ooh, root diverging choice. <laughs> uh... If I was playing on my own, I would absolutely pick the porn choice, but, uh... Terms of service would probably prefer that I don't pick the porno. Uh, something pretentious, grim, and artsy. You know, dread fits with tragedy. Oh ho! Artsy, you say? Yeah, yeah! We want to break new ground, jet steery across uncharted waters, then we've got to transcend genre itself. Transcend reality. Hell yeah, it's time to ascend. I'll admit, as much as I love needless subversion, I don't think I've ever directed anything that's all that out there. I don't suppose you'd... Were you about to ask me if I can do shit that's out there? I realize now that what a ludicrous question. I know, I know. You dolt, a truly ridiculous assumption why I... I have to spank. Go on. You enjoying the punishment negates the point of the activity. Can that be my reward if I manage to catch your good side? On camera? Rig dots, friend. I don't have a bad side. Also, what the fuck? <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm not sorry, really, at all. You knew exactly what you were signing up for. Speaking of, before we go, can I get some quick footage of you drinking the finger soda broth? Wait, what? Well, you did pour it out, so we might as well, you know. Refuse, or I'm leaving your head forever out of shame. Now, wouldn't that be a treat? Vimbert, oh, all right, all right. Oliver, I ain't drinking that. Noted. I don't suppose you'd have any ideas as to some other weird stuff we can film you doing slash saying on camera, would you? Oh, don't you work. I've got just the vision we need. Where are we and what am I doing? Am I wearing a domino mask? So, you getting this? I am, but I'm not sure what... Why are you wearing that mask? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I need to take a break and refresh my water. And the pure sex mask is like... I'm not going to get a more beautiful image to leave you on as I take a quick break. It is, indeed, sexy and mysterious. I'll be back for more of this, of this weird-as-hell game in just a minute or two. Hope you'll stick with me.
Uh, I can't get over the pure sex mask. That's so good. It's artsy and mysterious. Creates a sense of sexual mystique. Oh, thank phone god. I thought that was just me. How well do you see out of it, though? I don't. You should take it off before you stumble over any of the numerous tripping hazards on the floor of your tent and bash your head on a nearby rock. Like that had ever happened to me? Well, I heard that happen to a guy here in Dialtown. He has to wear a bandage on his head for the rest of his life. Now that's tragic. We should go for that kind of vibe. Just take it off. Okay, okay. Spoil sport. Happy? Sure am, kiddo. Alright, dialogue time. Start us speaking. Why? Oui. Buongiorno. Hold on. Is my flag on back at? Is that meant to be French? I think I heard a few languages in there. Yes, it's French. The artsiest language. It's Les Miserable, so bonus tragedy. Oh god. Why? You clearly don't speak French. Well, do you? Huh? Huh? Possibly. I could read up your dialogue in post if you wanted. <laughs> uh, no, nah, the metaphor for broken femurs is a little too obvious. Sucker blue, puppycock! You don't have my range. You sound like a sentient worm on a string, trying to talk to its jailer out of its confinement. I'm irreplaceable. Okay, sorry, go on. I put tower, lay misery, lay pain. This dialogue isn't exactly what I'd hoped it'd be. Nonsense, it's perfect. Pain means bread in French, you know. Double meaning. That's artistic. For bread? This is really bad, isn't it? It really is, yes. Maybe I should try leading you through the valley of trauma and emotions and junk. Oh, I've got it. Tell me, Fimber, have you ever lost anyone dear to you? Well, other than the clowns from my dubious early childhood memories. Not that. We're too far into attempting the tragedy idea to go full horror now. Well, aside from them, I don't think anyone's stuck around long enough for me to miss them. I guess I've been kind of missing my eggs since yesterday. I wonder if they're doing all right. Oh, hey! Why don't we just break into the carnival and go check on it? Would probably make a gnarly action scene. Oh, believe me. I've tried. <laughs> you know, this is artistic and edgy and all, but maybe we need to amp up the non-egg-related tragedy. Losing five bowling ball-sized eggs isn't the most relatable struggle to present to our audience. What we need is some relatable hardship. Well, I'm struggling with that because, frankly, my life is sublime. What we need is someone whose life is pure misery, like Jerry. 100% government certifiably wretched. Wait, that bandage talk got me thinking. I know just the guy. Please be Jerry. Alright, Randy, save the line! I don't like this. This couldn't be simpler, you denim-laden bum. Just save the line as it's written in the script. There is no script. You just handed me an orange peel with the words weeping and wanting scribbled on it in permanent marker. Wait, why'd you use our one permanent marker for that? 
That marker is our whole budget. That ink might as well be liquid gold. I was afraid his tears, his tears had washed non-permanent ink away. Oh, right. Speaking of. Randy, we need you to start weeping. Like, right now. Why would I be weeping? In the movie? In the movie? Eh, we'll add context in post. Puppies falling over, a clown getting blown up by dynamite, etc. That actually sounds more side splittingly hilarious than tragic. Shit balls, I knew we should have just gone with the comedy idea. Randy, don't you want to be a star? Actually, I want to promptly get the free cup of turnip water you promised you'd give me it and get back to work. Close enough. He's still not weeping, Bimber. I know. Randy, why aren't you weeping? Your life is piss. I, I think I've cried too much previously. My tear ducts might be broken. Plan B. I could rub raw onions in your eyes. W what eyes? Oh, right. Plan C, then. Get out of my tent. I might just cry if I don't get the glass of turnip water as promised for the emotional beratement that I just received. Uh, Oliver, get the- focus the camera. That went better than expected. You really degraded Randy. I could hear his soul weeping. Oh, come on, it's always doing that. Not that loudly, though. Yeah, but that's showbiz, baby. Okay, the riffraff I've filmed yet is... promising. But we don't have quite enough footage yet to fill 40 minutes of excruciatingly artistic cinema. We need an ending. The tragic cherry atop our miserable tragedy Sunday. Bingo! We need something edgy, something unbelievably horrific. Something that'll really freak the fuck out of our captive audience. Why are we doing this again? Filming a tragedy was your idea, let me remind you. Yeah, but is this good? Al, we're making art. Art isn't meant to be <laughs> Art isn't meant to be good, it's meant to be... Art? Yeah, art! Ooh, I've got it! How about you film me kicking little Billy in the ribs? N not like a fatal kick, but a really hard one. I... Oh, come on, it'd be perfect. Children getting maimed is always tragic. Yeah, but this is Little Billy we're talking about. The footage should honestly be more cathartic than tragic. Ah, oh, Drat, you're right, you're right. I really wanted an excuse to be able to do that. I know, I know, but what would the cops say? You think he'd report me to the police? Duh, he adores the fact that you can't physically harm him. I could always deny the crime. Except, did it be on film? A film that many witnesses will hopefully... will have hopefully watched in its entirety? Okay, plan B. What do you consider edgy? Well, crying blood is a fantastic way to go, in my green opinion. Wow, this brings me right back to my teenage fanfictions. Crying is tragic, blood is edgy, we're hedging our bets. Right, so, uh... Where do tears usually come out of your head when you're crying? That's actually quite a good question. The s sides, maybe? Or just generally out of any crevices slash seams I've got? I mean, then you just appear to be sweating blood. Which would probably look fucking gnarly, but let's face it, 
The only tragic part of that would be you'd appear to have an obscenely rare medical condition. Ah, rats. Okay, plan C. I can just vomit up some blood. That's... Okay, that's... I guess internal bleeding is... Relatable? More relatable than sweating blood, I guess. Fuck yeah! Groovy! I'm on board! As a handsome man in, in plaid once said to me, Gnarly, dude. So, where are you gonna get the blood? Mine's no good, it's... blue. Whoa! You've got blue blood? The circulatory system of a cramp. Sick! I'd offer mine, but... I think I need it. Don't most people have... a slightly excessive amount? I sold some of my blood a few days ago, so I could buy a stick-on temporary cat tattoo. Ah, shit, a cat too? <coughs> Ask me next catter day. <laughs> it's adorable. Yeah, that puts a bit of a dampener on my plan, all right. Oh, I know. The movie's gonna end up in black and white, right? Right, because it's artsier than because color is too joyous and gay. M for monochrome, M for misery. Well, I can't argue with the alphabet, so sure. So I should vomit, vomit something darker. Something that'll pop on Phil. Oh, I know. Ink. You're gonna vomit ink on camera? Dude, this movie's gonna be fucking radical. So, have you got any ink? Give me exactly ten minutes. Ten minutes of scurrying later. <laughs> I've got it. But wait, you're moneyless and live in a tent. Where did you even find free ink, the blood of bureaucracy? Oh, don't you worry. Let's say I just got, let's say I got an involuntary donation. Oh no, it's the printer lady. That couldn't have been legal. Oh, come on, she wasn't hurt. All I had to do was press a button on her head. The ink came right out. You still took her ink, though. It's hardly sporting. Is there a law against taking things from people? <laughs> My protagonist is like, Who, what, is, what is even getting charged for attempted murder? It's nature, right? Ownership of the fittest? Yeah, us civilized folks tend to call it petty theft. Well, shit. Oh well, no point crying over spilled ink. <laughs> Time to swallow this ink. Ah! <laughs> Why? Oh, oh, yep, that's... That's ink, all right. Oh fuck, oh god! Vimber! Are you okay? My stomach, god! Now I know why! People kept telling me not to drink their printer ink! I figured it was just because it costs money! Let's face it, it probably was just that. I doubt they were legitimately concerned about your well-being. Oliver! Oliver, I'm shit! <laughs> Oliver, I've shat myself. I've shat myself and I'm dying. Oh god, the lights are going out. Oliver, make sure the movie gets published. To preserve your undying artistic legacy? What? No, fuck that. Publish it so people can see how cool my death was. I'll be a legend. Friend. Just slip into oblivion. I'm begging you. Oh, phone god, I feel like a hungover boat rat with pants. <laughs> Rest in peace. Ink. The ending where you drink ink, shit yourself, and then perish like a dog. What a great ending.
<laughs> well, I feel perfectly satisfied with that outcome of my jackassery options. So, this was a little taste of Dial Town. Short stream, but I think I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, I will be back on Tuesday with more of that Nuzlocke thing I'm doing. Um, let's see. Ah, looks like Pabs is streaming, so I'm going to send him a little bit of a raid. Say hi to old Pepper Sauce Vasco, one of the guys I play Fire Emblem with on Wednesdays. So thank you everybody for coming out, spending a little bit of your morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it may be for you. Uh, if you want me to see me play more Dial Town, let me know. I'm... I don't know how I feel about this one. It's weird and I like weird, but I don't know if you guys like this weird. <laughs> that is going to do it for me. Say hi to Tabs. My name is Vimbert, and I'll see you around the internets. <laughs>